Hello hikers, Green Giant here, one of your hosts, coming to you once again from the lodge at Amicalola Falls. This is Appalachian Trail Kickoff 2019. What you're about to hear is recorded with permission by Judy Heartfire Gross. You've heard her on the show before. She joined us on our Gear Talk Part 1 episode. Judy, in addition to being an expert tent maker and an expert clothing maker, she is also an expert food dehydrator. This is her presentation at the kickoff about dehydrating your own food. Enjoy, and welcome to Stories from the Trail. Okay, I hope we have all the technical technology stuff worked out. Before we get started with everything, I want to show you a few things, and I'm going to pass around a sample, and then we'll talk about it all through the presentation. But, so you get to taste things here. This is one entire pineapple. I just want to show you what it comes down to when it's dehydrated. This, I believe, was either three or five apples. And this was five bananas. So I just want to show you what it looks like once it's dehydrated. What we're going to be doing is putting one piece of each of these in a little cup, along with some commercially freeze-dried or dehydrated bananas, apples, and pineapples. So you can taste the difference between home-dried and commercially purchased. Also, this is the pasta we're going to cook and feed you. So you get to taste a little bit of sweet and sour pasta. This is vegan. Um, and... This was an entire, what is it, a 14 ounce um, package of pasta with like four tomatoes, a bell pepper, a can of pineapple, um, and I list all the other ingredients. But I want to see you the quantity of what it looks like dehydrated. And this is a little sample of the pasta. I'm going to pass this around. You can stick your hands inside here, touch it, feel it, smell it, and see what it looks like because this is the end product of what you want. So. We're not cooking this, we're not eating it, so you can all stick your hands in it. Okay, so let's see if this works. I am Judy Gross um, from Lightheart Gear. I have been cooking and dehydrating my own meals since I started hiking AT back in 2006. Um, I have a Facebook group called Dehydrated Yourself Backpacking Food that you're welcome to join. There are two questions that I ask when you join the group. Why do, you want to jo why do you want to join the group? And where was your last backpacking trip? 99% of people answer that as when was your last backpacking trip? It's where. And I don't care if you haven't hiked yet. If you're saying you're planning the AT or something, I let you in. But if you ignore the questions altogether, I say no. Okay, so why do you want to do it yourself? Lots of reasons. Quality. Oh, no. Okay, cost. Somebody said cost, didn't they? Money. Diet preference. I'm vegetarian. I, and I like organic food. And I like healthy food. And I don't want preservatives. Taste. I like the taste of my food better than mountain house food. It's fun to do. So when you're planning a long distance hike, you've got several months of nothing to do but sit there planning. You can do all this cooking and dehydrating while you're planning. Portion control. So the um, mountain house, and I'm just going to pick on them for a generic <laughs> name, okay? So it, those come double portions, single portions, triple portions, whatever. And it may not be the right amount of food for you so you can control your portions much better. There's no cooking required in camp. All I do when I get to camp is I boil water. I am tired after a 15 or 20 mile day of hiking. I am hungry, I am lazy, and I want it now. I boil water in a jet boil because it's so fast. I put my food to rehydrate. I mix a cup of tea or a cup of soup or something, and while I eat my soup or tea, my food is rehydrating, and then I'm eating dinner before anybody else has their little alcohol stoves boiling water. And if you eat out of the Ziploc bag, there is no cleanup. I lift my spoon clean after my finished eating, put it away, and the empty food bag becomes my trash bag. <coughs> oh. 
Oh, I was hitting the laser pointer. Sorry, there's a laser pointer on this. <laughs> okay, so diet preferences. Some of the reasons why you want to make your own are you're vegetarian or vegan, organic, keto, kosher, gluten-free, raw foods, preservative-free. All of these reasons are to do it yourself. So when you start doing mail drops, what is the first per thing? Because when you make your own food, you've got to mail it to yourself. What is the first thing people complain about when, they, when you say, oh, I'm going to do mail drops? Post office is not going to be open. Who said that? You don't mail it to post offices. You can, but you can also mail it to the hostel. You can mail it to a, an outfitter store. You can mail it to a <coughs> hotel or a motel. There's a lot of options. You can mail it to post offices, and I often do. The only time I was in Colorado, and it was Labor Day weekend, and the post office was closed, and some of these tiny little towns are only open for like two or three hours, and I was not waiting till Tuesday for the post office to open, so I hiked on, I had to go and buy food in the store, and I wasn't happy about it. <coughs> so the other problem with um, mailing your own food, oh, so the other thing people tell you when you're gonna do mail drops is you're gonna get tired of your food from home. I have a much wider option of foods from home than what you're going to find in the little grocery stores along the way. You're going to find the same old tuna packets if you eat tuna. You're going to find the same ramen noodles. You're going to find the same everything in all these little grocery stores or if you're resupplying in one of the little local gas stations or something. So I can get a much wider variety. When I had the Appalachian Trail, I had 30 different entrees for dinner at night. So I could have something different every night of the month. Now, I will say, I got tired of the food from home, but I think, you know, you just crave a fresh meal that somebody else is gonna serve you while you're hiking. So we, we covered the thing about the post office won't be opened. So this is just a photograph that I clipped off the internet somewhere. This is when you would get tired of food from home. There's the exact same thing in every one of those packages. Um, appetites do change with the seasons. So in the summer, when it's really hot, your appetite will often decrease, and you're not <laughs> going to want these soups and stews that you made. I mean, you deal with it. You either don't eat what you have and find something new in town. Um, so we, we covered all those things. So a lot of people complain about the cost of postage um, versus the cost of buying in town. When you buy in town, you've got to buy retail prices. At home, you can shop things that are on sale. Uh, and these, these prices for the post office are last year's. I haven't updated it. I know they just changed their um, pricing. But if you take, did you know that if you take a box to the post office, you're going to pay more than if you do click and ship and, or um, stamps.com and do it online. You get a different rate. And there's a lot of different rates for postage. There's also, you've got flat rate boxes. There are regional rate boxes. And it's very confusing, but if you look through it all and figure out how the post office works, you can get some pretty good rates on shipping. So what do you think you would pay for five to seven days in town? It's gonna to cost you more than 17 or $18 and you're gonna to have to open all these packages and take things out, and then you're gonna to have too much of one thing and not enough of another thing, and you're gonna leave some stuff in the hiker boxes. So I, I still think it's cheaper for me to mail stuff from home. And fortunately, as Lightheart Gear, we get an even better discount shipping rate, so it's cheaper for us, because we ship a lot of stuff. Okay, so there's dehydrated food and there's freeze-dried food. Um, and there's a big difference. In the stuff that's going around, the commercial, I know the, the I think all of them are freeze-dried, which is very different from dehydrated. Freeze-dried food is stuff that will, um, it's more of a chalky consistency, and it'll crumble when you crush it. Um, it looks more like the original thing. Dehydrated stuff shrinks up. Freeze-dried will look the same. But do you know what freeze-drying is? Yeah, who's, who's had put stuff in the freezer and had freezer burn? On their, that's being freeze dried. They freeze it and then they suck off the moisture as it warms up. 
and that's what freeze dried is, and that's what happens with freezer burn. You have a freezer that, so the frost free freezer is at home in your refrigerator. What it does is it freezes it, and then periodically it warms up above freezing to melt all the frost in there. And that's why you sometimes see a little water dripping. So it's not keeping a consistent frozen temperature. If you buy the big chest freezers, which is where I store my food because I have no better place to store it, but the chest freezers do not, a, a non frost free freezer does not go above freezing. So it keeps it at a frozen temperature all the time. So what do you need in order to do your own dehydrating food? You need a dehydrator, and they come in two kinds. There's the donuts, and there's your Rubik's cubes. And that's the donut, and that's the Rubik's cube. Okay, so the donuts have the heat and the fan in the bottom and it has to blow up. And so the layer that's on the tray that's on the bottom is gonna get the most heat and the most air flow. And then, so you have to shift your trays around. The Rubik's Cube, the heating element and the fan is in the back. So it's blowing across all trays at the same time. Now, it does not heat perfectly even. You put a lid on the front, and I find that the front of the trays dry more because the heat goes forward, bounces off, and then dries the fronts of them. So I do move things around a little bit. And I love these photos because, oops, what did I do? There. Um, I love how OCD this person is that did all of these. <laughs> now, the other thing about this is these are fake because if you slice a tomato up, they're not all going to be the same size. You get consistently different. So when I put stuff in my dehydrator, it doesn't look anything like this. But I do have one of these. Now, I started this. I bought my first dehydrator. My kids were in Boy Scouts. And... I was in Walmart and they had one for like $30, so I picked it up. And I followed one of the recipes in the booklet that, on how to make fruit leather. That's what we were going to do for Boy Scouts. It didn't work. And it got put away and it stayed away forever. Until I found another book, and I'll come to that book in a, in a, in a minute. Um, the book was by Linda Frederick Yaffe, and I didn't bring it this time, but it's The Backpacker's Gourmet. And in it, she talks about dehydrating your whole meal, which is what we're getting into. And that changed everything. I, I used the little round one, and then I bought the Excalibur, and I used them both for a long time, and then I got rid of the round one. Okay, so what do you need in order to dehydrate? Some of the accessories you need are these solid trays, because if you're doing any kinds of soups or stews or liquidy foods, you've got to have um, something to keep it from dripping through. So these are for the round ones, and these are Teflon sheets that go on the Excalibur, the square ones. Other items that you really do need, these really aren't optional, is the coffee. Oh, I keep hitting the wrong button, I'm sorry. Where to go? Okay. So the coffee grinder. You're going to do some things, and it's, so I make smoothies for breakfast. Okay, and it dehydrates and it comes out um, like brittle sheets. And you have to break it up because it's going to rehydrate much faster when it's in a powder. So I take it out of the dehydrator. And when you take these things out and they're still warm, they could be pliable and bendable. I break it up into smaller pieces, put it in a Ziploc bag, a gallon Ziploc bag, and I put it in the freezer. And I wait till it's frozen brittle. And then I take it out and I slam it on the kitchen counter and it breaks it up into smaller pieces. And then I put it in the coffee grinder and I have one just like this and it um, pulverizes it, which will rehydrate a lot faster than if you're trying to, to rehydrate a, a chunk of stuff. Hmm. Ziploc bags and the food saver. Who has one of these um, vacuum sealing food savers? Do you use it? Okay, I bought one don't use it at all. When you use that, it makes your food into a solid brick, which is much harder to make them mold into your food bag. When they're soft and movable, it just you can fill in all those cracks in your food bag. 
Also, when you're rehydrating your food, you have to cut this open and then you can't zip it closed. So you pour boiling water into it and then you've got to make sure it doesn't tip over and spill. I've also found that with things like pasta, little pokey things, it, they'll poke through those bags and you'll lose your seal on it. So I don't use that anymore. I strictly use Ziploc brand um, freezer bags. They're heavier duty. You can put boiling water in them and it does not hurt them. One question. Um, you said to use the solid trays in your donut dehydrator. Can you just um, You can. So the question was, can you use something else for the solid trays in either one of these? I, a lot of people will say parchment paper, and I did that once, and then I was peeling parchment paper off the bottom of everything, and I threw it all out. I tried aluminum foil once, and if you've got, if you're my age, you have silver fillings in your mouth, and you can't peel off all that aluminum foil, you're never going to do that again. I have used saran wrap successfully, plastic wrap but I try not to use disposable things and, and I hate saran wrap, you can never deal with it. So <laughs> purchasing these, and you can buy them on Amazon or eBay or something, you can buy them and they're really worth having. Okay, this is my favorite new item for this. I, I purchased this not intending to use it for this, but this has became my favorite toy, the spiralizer. Because look what you can do to apples. You get a consistent quarter inch cut. It's so much fun to do this. <laughs> I do, it has an attachment that will peel it, but I use a regular you know, potato peeler kind of thing to peel the apples first. What do you do with seeds? The core? It, it, it cores it. You can see in the picture right there, the little seeds. So, so you, you take that out and then you put one slice through it or actually I you know cross cut it and get little wedges. Okay, so how do you do this? I don't dehydrate individual ingredients unless it's fresh fruit. I dehydrate my meal. Any, pretty much any meal can be dehydrated. There are, I, I have on here any one pot meal, but if you want something like you know, rice and beans, and you don't want it all mushed up together, I will, for that, I will dehydrate the rice separately from the beans and take the different components so I can layer them up. But any one pot meal or stew, you can cook and dehydrate it. Put your final meal in the dehydrator, not the components of it. Um, casserole, soups, stews, fresh fruit. There are some salads you can dehydrate, and on, I have some recipes for those um, on the Facebook group in the file section. Carrots, zucchini, um, cabbage, slaws, those things will, will dehydrate and rehydrate well. Um, you, you can't put like a mayonnaise kind of dressing on this coleslaw or something, but, but there are recipes and I have them on the, in the Facebook group. Those I rehydrate with cold water. So if I have that for lunch, I will put water, cold water in it, put it back in my pack, hike on for an hour, and an hour later I stop and it's rehydrated without having to cook it. Um, some other things that you can, for lunch, that you can um, dehydrate it with cold water is if you eat tuna fish, you take a can of tuna fish, you add like a can of beans, white beans, whatever, you add whatever kind of seasoning you want, whether it's... Um, lime juice or salsa or hot sauce or something, put it in a blender, blenderize it, and you end up with hummus or pate kind of thing, and you just eat that with chips. And for lunch, that is a really high protein lunch, which will get you hiking for the rest of the afternoon. Um, and I said earlier, I am vegetarian, so I don't do a lot of meat. I know there are issues with like dehydrating your own chicken. Um, and from the group that I have, a lot of people say buy canned chicken or canned turkey that it will rehydrate much better than if you do it yourself. So I, I can't answer a lot of questions about meat. I have in the past dehydrated hamburger meat and it makes it into these little spitty rocks, but that does rehydrate well. Um, so temperatures to dehydrate things at. If you're doing 
fresh fruit, things that you want to keep raw, like <laughs> when I make smoothies, I use a can of coconut milk and I put in whatever fruit and maybe some cashew nuts or almonds and then I add some protein powder, but I don't want to cook that. So I keep my dehydrator, turn the temperature turned down to about 115 degrees or less. This is considered by raw foodies raw. It takes a lot longer to rehydrate. Oh, and one of the questions that I get asked most frequently frequently is how long does it take to dehydrate something? I can't answer that question. How fat did you cut it? How big is the piece? What is the temperature of your dehydrator? How much do you have packed in on a tray? And the humidity in your environment can play a little bit of a role in that. So it doesn't matter. You, you put it in the dehydrator and leave it until it's done. You can't over dry it. Um, and for foods that I've cooked, like the pasta, we just crank the thermometer up all the way to the top on that. My dehydrator does have a timer on it. I don't use that, I just, I have to, I just turn it all the way up. I usually put things in in the evening. I check them in the morning when I wake up. If they're not done, I turn the timer back to keep going. I go to work, I come home and I check it again. It's not gonna hurt it if it stays in there past when it's dry. So we talked about that. It's done when it's done. <laughs> and again, some of your things may still feel a little soft when you take it out, um, like the smoothies. So if you're not sure, take it out of the tray, let it cool on the countertop, and then see if it's brittle or not. Okay, so and what makes food spoil? Anybody? Heat, air, moisture. Heat, moisture, and exposure to whatever is in the air. So you want it dry, you want to keep them cool after they're done, and you want to keep them as airtight as possible. So I put them in a Ziploc bag, and then I'll suck out, I'll either fold it or suck out as much air as I can to keep the air out of it. But it is the moisture that is going to cause them to, to go bad. Um, so rehydrating your food. How do you do this? That's another question I get asked. I have it, let me have a Ziploc bag. Okay. So I, I boil my water and I pour water until it just comes to the top of this. And then I let it soak. And after about 10 minutes, you check it. You can tell if it's gonna need a little more water or not. If you put in too much water, there's really nothing you can do about it. Um, but you can make a stew into a soup. <laughs> and so when I'm cooking things also, if it's soup, I just cook it down until it's thicker before I put it in the dehydrator because all you want to do is get rid of the water. So breakfast ideas. I told you I, use, I make smoothies. And I use canned coconut milk. I use the full fat canned coconut milk and we'll get it to the fats in a bit. Um, and then add whatever you want. I will put citrus fruits in there, and I will put the entire orange in it. The rind, the peel, everything. It adds a lot to the flavor of it. Um, mangoes, bananas. So typically, I'll take one can of coconut milk. I'll put in two bananas. I may put in two apples, or strawberries and bananas. Um, I usually put in a handful of cashews or almonds. and I, I put it in the blender, blenderize it, taste it, drink half of it, <laughs> give somebody else some to taste, and then I dehydrate it. After it's dehydrated and powdered, I will add a scoop of protein powder to it. I have found, it, it I can't stand protein powder, um, and they don't taste very good, but it adds a lot. You, you need a higher, the simple carbs of the smoothie is not gonna get you very far down the trail. So adding the protein powder really gives it a, a bit of a punch to help you hike during the day. If you use milk, Neato is the best powdered milk out there. You ask any hiker and they'll tell you that. It is a full fat milk. It's going to rehydrate a lot faster than the fat free powdered milks that you find on the shelf. This is often in the children's section, but you want to make sure you're not buying baby milk. Um, but it is whole milk, it's made by Nestle's, it's made for the Mexican market, 
Walmart always has it, and a lot of other stores will have it, but look in the children's section. And um, yeah, and, and I would add, if you're going to add that, I would add that after everything else is dehydrated. I wouldn't add it up front. And I have made things that I've put milk in. So there's a dessert. Um, it's, a, it's an Indian carrot pudding. And you grate up the carrots, you cook them a little bit with butter, and then you add in some milk and cook that down and add in all the spices. So I have done stuff with milk in the past, and it was fine. I had no problem with it on the trail. Um, smoothies, we talked about that. So this is just a, a, you get about a 500 calorie breakfast with that. So we talked about this, make sure you freeze it and then grind it up till it's a powder. Oh, and drinking from the Ziploc bag, let me show you this. This is really important. <laughs> when you drink from a Ziploc bag, you want to drink like this. You do not want to drink it this way. Take my word on this, okay? <laughs> you will wear it. If you're trying to drink it this way, you'll wear it. If you put it this way, you can control it much, much better. Got that? Try it someday. You'll, you'll. Is it worth taking a straw for that purpose? Or is that just... <laughs> Are you, are you going to wash that straw out and use it the next time? <laughs> are you throwing plastic out? And I have to tell you, I started the AT in 2006. So, so when I pack my food up for a hike, I put breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks into one ga a, a one-gallon Ziploc bag. And those all go in my freezer. And then I, my husband ships everything to me, and I say, okay, I'm going to need like five days for the next trip. So he just grabs five of these one gallon Ziploc bags out of the freezer. So I started in 2006, I'm still using those same one gallon Ziploc bags. Mm -hmm. um, lunches, I talked about the apple, carrot, zucchini, um, salads, the tuna, hummus, and bean spreads. <coughs> Dinners, any one pot meal, stews, pastas, casseroles, left leftovers from your favorite restaurant. I will go out to eat before a hike, and I will order an extra meal to take home. Oh my God. To be sitting on top of a mountain and having your favorite, you know, Thai curry is heaven. <laughs> um, but, a, but a lot of the stuff that you'll get in restaurants have larger pieces, so go home and cut it up a little bit so you don't have big chunks of broccoli or something in it. <laughs> so my take home message is don't prepare the separate components. Dehydrate your entire meal. Um, desserts, rice pudding is always a big hit, and I've done all different kinds of rice puddings. The kind that you bake in the oven, like my mother used to do, um, the Indian kind of rice puddings, they're all good. Just throw in lots of honey and cinnamon and whatever else, it's extra nutrition. Cake croutons I've never really done, I don't really, they, they crumble too much. Applesauce, just pour it out of the applesauce <laughs> jar and pour it on the trays and dehydrate it. But again, you want to break that up into small pieces. Um, I don't grind that unless it's really fine applesauce, but that makes it too much like baby applesauce. So I just break it up into small pieces. Okay, so let's talk about this. The wisdom out there, the whatever, says you can't dehydrate fatty things. Now, I will agree, av avocados you cannot dehydrate. They just don't work. The, the, the theory is that fats will, okay, fats will not dehydrate, they will not dry. But everybody says, oh, it's going to go rancid on you. Now, how long do you keep a bottle of cooking oil sitting on your kitchen counter? Months? Anybody have one that's been there? I've got a bottle of some kind of oil that's been there for over a year. Have they gone rancid? There might be a little bit. Rancid oil will not harm you. It will taste a little off, but it's not going to harm you. And if you cook something with oil in it, it is going to go rancid just the same as your oil on the kitchen counter. So I don't, I, I use the fats. I don't cut them out of the foods I'm making now. And I have never had a problem with anything bad. Um, cheese doesn't really dehydrate well. Um, and I carry chunks of cheese with me. 
Okay, so this is the book I was telling you about. This is what got me started down this road. The Backpacking Gourmet by Linda Frederick Yaffe. It is still available. Um, she has very specific recipes, including this pasta recipe. Um, and she tells you how to cook it, how to dehydrate it, and how to rehydrate it. And this was the eye-opener to me. I followed a bunch of recipes in her book, and then I thought, well, let me try this recipe, let me try that recipe, and it all works. Yeah. <laughs> so, apples to apples. The prices, I have not updated the prices this year, so just they're a couple of years old, but we're comparing things. So, two medium organic Fuji apples, and I did not shop sales. I just walked into the grocery store, I said, oh, I've got to update my presentation, let me go get these. So the, these prices are old. And Earth Bear is not the most economic grocery store to shop in, and they are organic. So I don't know if you could see, it was one pound something to start with. Um, after they're skinned and peeled, 13.7 um, ounces, once it was dried, it was 1.8 ounces. That is water. What you got rid of is water. Now, on my Facebook group, a lot of people who have more time than me, or more, or a little, whatever, they will, <laughs> they will weigh their food first, and weigh it after it's dehydrated, and then they write on the bag how much the difference is, and that's how much water you're going to add. Me, just to the top of the line. Yes? What, what is the name of your Facebook group? Dehydrated Yourself, Backpacking Food. Um, I was going to say something, I forgot what it was. I'm so, sorry. No, 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 it wasn't you. <laughs> um, so this was 88% weight loss. So, per commercially purchased, I think these were dehydrated originally. And you can see the difference in this. And, and if you shop sales, if you shop farmer's markets, you can get, and if you're not concerned if they're organic or not, you can get stuff a hell of a lot cheaper. The dollar thirty-three a serving. And, and what did you think of the taste of those, the commercial? Mine were good. The purchase were, were nasty, huh? That's some of the nastiest fruit that I've ever tried. Those. Do you have the bag? So this is what's in the pasta. Yeah, this is this dehydrated, freeze dried. Yeah. Okay. You got a piece of this and a piece of mine. No, I didn't know. I didn't know that. They're all in the Yes. That one was the chunkier version. So these were the prettier looking version. Mine was the ugly looking version. But mine tasted like bananas, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and you, you know the banana chips that you buy, the ones that break your teeth? Those are actually dipped in something and then fried before they're dehydrated. Okay, so the pasta you ate is onions, tomatoes, garlic, Green pepper, there's a little bit of ginger, the can of crushed pineapple, a little bit of apple cider vinegar, and soy sauce in it. And that's what you ate. So there's all that. So I got six meals for about $3 each. How much do you pay for a mountain house meal? Oh, I know what I was going to say. Portion control. I don't, I don't have it here. Portion control. When I started this, I didn't know what one portion of food was going to look like. Because, again, you have no idea how much this is going to make. So what I did to start with was I cooked the pasta and I put it on a plate or I put it in a bowl. And I thought, okay, this looks like one meal. And then I put that one bowl on one tray in the dehydrator. So I knew when that came out and it only filled the bag up, you know, like that much, I trusted that that was one meal, even though it didn't look like anything. And portion control can be very difficult to figure out. Um, have you ever gone to a restaurant where they have the really big plates and the food looks like it's a really little amount of food on the plate, but you eat it and you're full? It's a very visual thing. So when you take that bowl 
of pasta and you put it on the tray in the dehydrator and spread it out, you're thinking, that's not enough food, but trust that in the bowl, it was, you knew that was one meal for you um, and put it on the tray. At this point, I have a real good visual idea of how much is one meal for me. So I know if I put pasta into here, that that's gonna be enough up to that line. So I now just shove as much as I can on one tray and get it done a lot faster. When you're doing, my dehydrator has nine trays, but when you're doing just nine meals at a time and you need enough for six months, it's gonna take a lot longer. And it took me, I think, four months to do all my food. But um, at this point, I know, and I also know like four ounces roughly is about a, a big meal for me. So this is the pasta cooking, five trays of it. So wet, it was one pound, 1.8 ounces. Um, and I think I had taken the bowl, I, I measured that without the weight of the bowl in it. And that's what it looks like going in the tray and this is what it looks like coming out. 5.2 ounces when it was finished. So that was 75% weight savings, which was all water. My food when I go backpacking is about a pound and a quarter to a pound and a half a day. And that's the end of that. Thank you very much. I used to really go into the ingredient list in a lot of the commercial dehydrated stuff. They keep changing it. There are a lot of nasty ingredients in some. There's a lot of newcomers to the group that have very good ingredients in them. Um, some are dehydrated, some are freeze dried. So I've just taken all of that out of the presentation. Just know that um, a lot of the, there, there's one ingredient called Terula yeast. Um, it's used as a flavoring that comes as a waste product from paper mills. So if you ever see that in something, Spell there's T-O-U-R-L-A, something, Torula yeast. Um, there's a lot of ingredients in your food that comes from crude oil. I'm not eating crude oil. So this is another one of the reasons why I make my own. You're but it's buying a Trina cheese that actually says cellulose. So, and you know, it's cellulose, that's a generic name for plant product. It could be from wood pulp, it could be from um, the shaft from cotton seed. It, it, you have no idea what it is. So just Google these things on Wiki will come up with, tell you what it is, and there's a lot of really nasty stuff there. So any questions? You put it, if it's still soft, you put it back in the dehydrator and let it go for longer. Yes? With almond milk, we're okay with smoothies? Yes, okay. yes. I just like the coconut milk better. I just like to make a comment. We just a, a wide mouth Nalgene jar. After lunch, if we have something that needed dehydrated, we put that in after lunch. Yeah. So when we got to camp, we didn't have to use as much fuel. Yeah, that works. You can rehydrate everything with cold water. If you want to eat a cold dinner, you can, like you said, add the cold water at lunchtime to it, and by dinner it's, it's rehydrated. You put everything back in the freezer once you dehydrate it and pack it and everything? Yeah. I do because that's the only place I have to store it. <laughs> and we don't, use the, we don't use the freezer for anything else. The only thing in there is my food. What's the shelf, shelf life either way? Years. Okay. If it's properly dehydrated, so it's dry, and it's kept in a cool, dark place, it should keep for years. Now, you can always open it up and smell it and see if any, you know, it's changing colors and growing things, but I've, I have never, I have stuff that's been in the freezer for three years and I still use it. No, these become garbage bags. 
And if it's too much information, they become yeah, yeah, but they, they also become pee bags in the middle of the night when you don't want to get out of your tent. You can pee into a Ziploc bag. <laughs> You're hikers, you know this stuff. Yes? Okay, this is a dumb question, but how do you avoid sharp edges on your fruit? Because I've had like a special with mango, and I've had a real bit of problem with the edges are just sharp. Okay, you can't. Okay. And, and I do bring an extra <coughs> Ziploc or I will save one that I know does not have holes in it because sometimes you, oh, I forgot. So what do you do when you're rehydrating this? You need to keep it in some kind of little insulator. George, anti-gravity gear sells these, he makes these, and I have several of them. But this fits the freezer size bag, the, the quart size bag. You put it in there, and if it's really, really freezing cold, I'll either put my hat or my jacket around this he also makes a larger one for um, like the mountain house size meals or, or something. But this is one of the best inventions out there. The bottom does open up and yes, I've gone through several of these because they're great. And if it leaks in here, it's not really a big deal. This is kind of, kind of waterproof, so this is what I use. Yes? I'm sorry? So the apples I do peel, what's going to happen when you dehydrate that with the peel off is the food will kind of separate away from the peel anyway. I, I, make, I make dog treats for my dogs, I bake sweet potatoes and then I slice them and with that and then I dehydrate it and God, the dogs love that stuff. Um, but the peel separates a little bit, and then it's just crumbling up. So, yeah. I Can you dehydrate sweet potatoes? Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I have, I have made um, mashed sweet potatoes and dehydrate. You can do whatever you want. You can do anything, okay? But, yes, I have made mashed sweet potatoes, and I add, you know, brown sugar and some butter, whatever, and then I'll dehydrate that, and then I powder that, and that is, like, a little side dish. I have made um, risotto, and that's another little side dish sometimes. So yeah, I'm having my entree and a side dish. Yeah, talk about that. Hmm. As a bonus, a Ziploc bags were invented by a person in English, Indiana. Okay. <laughs> Somebody else in the back had a question? Just had a comment. Um, when I was doing this, um, Previously, I'm not, not dehydrating right now, but I would take my leftovers. You know, you, you had your meal and there was leftovers instead of uh, putting them in the refrigerator to dehydrate. Yeah, I do that too sometimes. Well, thank you very much. Oh, one more question. <laughs> I know a lot of people do, the oxygen absorbers. I've never used them. Judy, thank you again for your presentation. So a little surprise for you. This is Charlie Salton. This is the guy I Thank you. I didn't mean to eat those myself. Of course, you probably have the average. We bought a hundred soup starters in Florida uh -huh. before our hike, and we call it soup starter at the beginning, but toward the end we got so burnt out on it, we called it poop starter. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Lasagna, ravioli.